Hi everyone, I'm Hales and welcome to my channel. Welcome to sunny Suffolk, really super bright conservatory sunny Suffolk. I'm filming here today because the colours really show up what I've made but yeah, you might just have to deal with a bit of squinting going on and sweat across my brow but hey ho. Now today I'm showing you something I made my mother-in-law. I made her two cushion covers she came over in the summer and she saw this fabric and this is actually leftover upholstery fabric from some cushions that I made for my living room last year. My husband doesn't like them. He said he didn't like, I don't know, it was either the pattern or the colour or something like that but I said that's tough luck. They're still there in the living room. Now the, the cushion I made last year I've got here um, and I backed it with a teal velvet. Now with the velvet, because you have a pile or nap, should I even get getting technical, um, to the fabric, when you sew something without a nap on the other side, it kind of sits and then it like shifts a bit because of like the pile on the fabric. So it wasn't that easy to sew, but this one, it's just normal and then I did the invisible zip, so on two different sides. So I did, because I only used that fabric on one side, I think I have a cushion which is double sided with that, but I had a little bit left over. And I was just going to use it as a toil fabric and my mother-in-law, she just said no, she likes the fabric, so I said well I can make a cushion cover if you like, flippantly. And when she left, she said, oh yes, you know, because she said that it would go with the colours in her living room. So I thought I would rather than waste the fabric. So this is the cushion cover. I have just plopped a cushion pad in, which is from a flat cushion we have at home, because I'm going to be selling them just as the covers and then she can insert her own cushion pads. So the ones we have in our living room, they are duck feathered. This is just a polyester stuffing, so it is quite flat, you can't really puff it up. Now I was concerned that I hadn't allowed enough seam allowance to make it super puffed up. I'm using puffed up, I don't know if that, I'm sure that's not a technical term. Now the cushion, I cut out two panels which were 45, I'll put it this way you can see the piping there, um, 45 centimetres square and then I, so because I looked at what size cushion pads you could get, so you can get like 55, 45, so I thought well I'll go for 45, cut that out and then of course I'm taking it in slightly because I'm using a seam allowance within that 45 centimetres, so the cushion cover will be slightly smaller than the cushion, which is what you're supposed to do, but I know some people take an inch seam allowance just so um, it really kind of holds its shape and you get a nice rounded cushion but this still has squishy and that's not too hard my daughter doesn't like our cushions she said they're not comfy because they're too firm that's because I did a big seam allowance on those ones um, so it was a tighter cushion but this one um, I'm just showing off now because I thought I'd make it extra nice by putting some piping on it because I didn't do that on ours and I have added where is it? I can't find it, that's how good it is, I'm joking. Um, invisible zip, and I, I worried because I thought, I didn't really concentrate what I was doing. I added the piping in and then I put the zip on. I was like, oh no, I put the zip at the bottom of the cushion and I was worried that this was gonna sit on the, set, the, set, the sofa and would pluck the fabric, but then I put on a sewing group about it and a lot of people said no, that's where the zip probably should go because then it's concealed so you don't see it on the side. So that was a lucky accident, should I say. Now I used, I bought, um, I bought a piping foot. You probably all know what a piping foot is, for those who don't, there it is. And on the back, so it has your ridges there. So the big one, just dropped it. The big one then goes over the piping. Now I now I made self bias binding strips um, and then I had, I used five millimeter cord. Blocked my face out so then it will focus more. So this is leftovers. So um, yeah, so there we go. So but yeah, so the piping foot, oh hang on, let me just go pick it up. If you're watching this and you're not subscribed, please hit that button because I really appreciate it and if you are already subscribed thank you very much for doing so. So the piping cord will sit in the foot. I'm just double checking my review finder that you can see what I'm doing. So it will just glide along and it will just sit there and then you can get your stitching really close to where the piping is and it's really good because I did piping once before and 
I'm quite embarrassed to say it was four years ago some friends of ours were moving away and our daughters are really good friends so as like a leaving gift I made her daughter a cushion which was really a pyjama case so it wasn't padded out as a cushion so I made it with like stuffing which I put in then I tried to pipe it after I add the stuffing because it's too bulky and I used um hang on where is it? and the foot I used for that was this I thought that was a piping foot. I think it's just another zip foot, but that's what I used. But it no way near did it get as tight as, to the piping as this one here. By the way, I've got this one. I think it was on Amazon, Amazon Prime, for about four pounds. So, and it's just a, a snap-on one, so it's not necessarily specific to my machine, but obviously it does fit. So anyway, so I did this piping, and it was it was pretty bad and I also did free motion embroidery because I hadn't done that for the first time I just kind of went with it and did a picture on the front I mean and then I had velcro on the back I think I did use my walking foot for the velcro so that made it easier so you just open it at the back you can put your pajama pajamas in it seal it up and so from the front it just looks like a cushion but obviously it conceals your pajamas on the bed it's now I've made this one I realize how awful the other one was especially to give as a gift but I didn't really know I hadn't got that much practice and I was like do something for the first time and then just gave it to them but they were happy enough because I you know it was it was very homemade rather than handmade but you know their sort of love had thought had gone into it so I think they appreciated that but one thing I struggled with was joining let me find it on here. It was joining where the strips go for the bias binding. Oh, here we go. So on this cushion here, I don't know if it's obvious. Here, where here, you can see, it's really hard in the sun to know if that's focusing or not, I think it is. That's where the two ends meet. Now on the cushion that I made before, I had the, the cushion I had before, I was like, what do I do when I get the ends? And so I had them like that and then it was really like bulky because I was doing it over and so when I looked on YouTube what you should do you unpick your bias binding so you have the cord there and then you fold it over let me just show you so you unpick your bias binding at one end so you can actually find the cord and then that raw edge you just fold under so let me just do that. Okay, so you've got a folded edge, it's probably a bit bright in here to see, and the cord. So when the other end of the cord comes to meet it, you pop the two ends so they butt up together. It's all frayed out, so it probably hasn't worked as much. But then, can you, oh, then can you see? It then joins them together so you don't have two bulky bits together. Now that was a game changer for me because I had no idea that's what you needed to do and obviously I hadn't done that on my previous cushion. The other thing were the corners. So, you know, they're relatively squared off or should I say rounded off, that's each of the four corners there. And that's the other tip is that when you have the bias binding to go around the edge, just clip the corners on the bias tape um, up to nearly where the cord is and it will then help you to work the, the bias piping round the corner. I didn't do that before and it was really squared and squiffy and I'm really embarrassed. I'm hopefully they don't, they don't still have it but I never know because that's in a bedroom somewhere. But yeah, so I was quite happy with this. What I should have done is because it's quite a loose weave fabric and it has frayed I should have overlocked each square before I sewed them together which I intended to do one in the middle of the night one day when I couldn't sleep and I thought oh I need to overlock those edges before I sew them together and then when I actually got up to in the morning to do it forgot sewed them and then I was like oh no it's fraying so I have them whizzed them through the overlocker um, I'll show you the insides just in case you want to see the insides um, so this is the other one so I've made two now she always tells me that, this is my mother-in-law, that um, home accessories should be done in odd numbers. Now unfortunately I didn't have enough fabric to make her three cushions so maybe it would be an odd number like one on each of her sofas and that's the odd number. So I have literally then just run it through the overlocker um, after it's gone through 
it wasn't as easy because the piping is then quite bulky and I didn't have much of a seam allowance and so I'm really on the edge and I've got this big bit of piping here and I couldn't quite get it through the overlocker, a bit jammed and the needle snapped in half and I still haven't found it. It's I got my overlocker out and I sort of tilted it or had it all out, I poked in there with a the brush and it's like the majority of the needle is lost, it's somewhere in the machine but it seems to be working okay but I'm just worried at some point it's going to clang up and I'll have to go and send it off to get repaired which is going to be annoying so there we go. But yes, cushions done, it was part of my plan for August, I wanted to get them filmed so I can go to the post office and send them off to her later because I know that she's waiting for them because she's been watching on Instagram that I was on my progress on making them. So I just wanted to share those couple of tips with you and I hopefully you'll have a good weekend. I am back to work on Monday, boo-hoo, not looking forward to that. My kids aren't back until Wednesday so that's when the school run commute nightmare kicks in so I'm not looking forward to that. Hopefully I'm still going to keep sewing though as much as I have been. I've literally just sat on my butt for about five and a half weeks sewing so I need to get a bit more active as well. Um, but yes, stay tuned to this channel because I will be coming up soon with my August makes. So stay tuned for that video and I will see you soon.